Welcome back everyone. Well, it's the next day. Uh, our video that we shot yesterday, you're probably watching it about a week ago, um, or at least a few days ago at best. Um, yesterday when I was filming that video, we were expecting 20 centimeters of snow and we got, I don't know, probably about uh, close to 10 maybe instead of the uh, 15 to 20, which is good. And it was supposed to snow all day today, but thankfully it uh, stopped a while ago and we're now with blue skies. We were going to go outside earlier today and start to um, cook down the birch water into birch syrup, but it was just a little bit too miserable this morning. A little strange saying that in the spring, too miserable, whereas in the winter when it's minus 30, it's a fine day, but now that it's spring and it's set minus five, it's um, too cold out. I don't know, go figure. Okay, so you can see our haul from yesterday. We have the large liter and a half jug and then eight and a little bit of the, uh, the liter jugs. So within 24 hours, we got a fair amount with the method that Dave used with the, the tapping of the birch. So these are the um, poplar buds. Um, I just wanna make it clear that this is not a soap making video. It's not a how-to, but I will be doing some how-tos a little bit later on. I'm gonna be doing some cool traditional stuff um, all the way from uh, using these things again or, or different plant materials where we do soap off the land and learn how to make our own lye all the way up to modern. Okay, let's get this strain. So I've just kind of come over to the other side of the counter here so uh, I'm not stood behind a camera trying to um, trying to pour all of this. So uh, I've got my handy dandy chopstick which um, I'm just gonna put onto a chunk of paper towel for now. I have a bag um, I want the poplar buds that are spent to go into here and we can just put that back on the land, poplar buds. Um, I've got a little little bucket here, um, which I'm going to be labeling with a Sharpie. Um, the other things that are gonna be really handy to have, um, as I might've mentioned, poplar buds are sticky. I'm gonna be using just some hand sanitizer, actually gets everything uh, out really nice. So I've got a, a mesh strainer, I've got my cheesecloth and a bucket. <laughs> I've got my, my little whey um, container here uh, just to hold the handle up uh, and make things a little easier and hopefully it won't, things won't slip around too much for me. And I've got two layers of cheesecloth here actually just to, just to catch everything. <clears throat> and I'm going to put some gloves on. It's just so much easier, uh, especially when things become a bit of a sticky mess. I'm not sure entirely what I'm going to do with this in terms of um, if I'm going to leave it just scented with the poplar, which is a really beautiful scent. It's actually quite nice in soap uh, without any kind of scent to handle. All right, um, that's about it. So I'm going to clean all of this stuff up. I thought I'd just sort of show you before I go <laughs> how easy um, it is to clean with um, with the hand sanitizer. This stuff actually will not come out just by scraping it, but if I put some hand sanitizer in, you'll see it actually just comes straight out. It's Hopefully you can see that on camera. Today we're going to start soaping. It's been a few days since I've uh, actually started this video. I wanted to just say, and I don't remember if I've told you in the last video, that I, I'm not gonna be giving the recipe for this one. This one's going to be um, one that will go into our line. So I'm just gonna give you some of the basics uh, just to see a little bit about how the soap making process goes. And those of you who are gonna end up taking some classes with me, I know there's a few of you out there and thank you, you've been super patient. Um, but it will give you a little bit of an idea of how I work. I'm going to really quickly go through how uh, this setup is um, and just talk about a couple of things. Those of you who are experienced soapers, you can just skip to uh, uh, the end and <laughs> when we uh, take it out of the um, mold and cut it. All right, so those of you who are interested, let's just start out with the safety uh, equipment. Necessary, you got to have... Um, some safety glasses on. Lie is not good to get in your eyes. Always you need uh, you need your gloves. 
you always have to have those. And I've got actually a lab coat on, but long sleeve shirt. And you want closed toed shoes. Other things that I have that are just off the view of the camera is uh, I've got a bucket of water that when I'm done um, blending my soap, it will be a whole lot easier to clean it by just sticking it into the bucket of water and giving it a little whiz. Um, because I'm probably gonna be splitting my batter up, I've got um, another attachment um, for uh, small batches of soap. Not necessary, but super handy to have a, uh, a thermometer, a digital thermometer. Um, and today I'm actually gonna say this is necessary because I'm gonna be soaping at room, room temperature. Um, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Um, I have my, uh, I've got just a tester mold here because this really is a tester size batch. In case the tester batch is a little bigger than I anticipated, um, I've got some spare molds there. I decided I was going to scent this after all, after all with some complimentary scents. Um, and this is an incredible scent blend. Um, I will give the scent blend out because it's really, really incredible. Um, I have uh, patchouli oil, wintergreen oil, and some fur needle in there. Uh, it smells unbelievable. I'm really loving that. And then the other thing that I've done is, uh, because I'm going to split off my batch, one batch I'll just leave whatever color <laughs> this ends up being, but the other uh, part I've got some uh, indigo powder dispersed in some of the oil from, uh, from my batch in here. Um, I have my lye water um, uh, cooling off behind me. It's probably ready to go right now. All right, let's make soap. I'm going to start with uh, putting my gloves on. I'm going to make sure that my hand blender is plugged in and I have everything to hand that I need. I'm going to go and, oh, these are hard to put on. <laughs> I'm going to go and grab my lye, but I'm going to plug this guy in quickly first. Make sure I have that ready. Um, oh, I did mention that um, I was going to talk about why I'm soaping at room temperature today. I normally prefer to make hot soap. <laughs> um, in fact, the uh, 10 minute hot process soap is kind of my thing. Um, but I'm soaping at room temperature today because uh, I don't really know how the resins in the um, poplar will react. I've made poplar soap with resins before and it does tend to trace pretty quickly. Um, but I don't know how this will react, especially with the, um, the fur needle um, essential oil in there. So we shall see. Um, and soaping at room temperature will tend to make it trace a little less quickly. Okay, I'm going to uh, go ahead and start this. I'm going to just uh, soap with uh, music in the background and hopefully you will uh, enjoy it.
Okay, and that's it, job done. Now I have to uh, let these sit for uh, at least uh, 24 hours before I can unmold them. And uh, this one will then cut. This one you'll see the results of the beautiful little uh, imprint of the daisy, or the sunflower, I think. Um, I, uh, it looks like um, the blue just didn't make any difference in color in there at all. I wasn't loving the, uh, the actual color itself. Um, so I decided to add the blue to the whole batch, um, but it didn't really do much of anything whatsoever. So it's just going to be um, <laughs> sort of a brown colored soap, um, and it'll probably mellow out a little bit. But um, that's it. That's the process. So we'll see you back for the cut. Well, we're back earlier than I thought we were going to be. It's only a few hours later, and uh, and this soap is it's it's rock solid. It's really hard. You'll notice uh, a crack in the uh, the top of the soap here. Sometimes what happens with soap, depending on how you work with it, um, you can uh, expect a fair amount of heat. And uh, this guy obviously produced quite a bit of heat and um, the steam must have escaped here. That's one of the most common reasons you're gonna find a crack in the soap. I'm not too worried about it because it's um, just in the tester block and it'll probably be something that our family just simply uses. I want to go through a few tools that we will need um, because this is still raw soap. So I need to have gloves. I can't uh, touch this raw soap batter. It's going to take probably anywhere from 24 to 48 hours before it fully saponifies. So right now it's not safe to touch it with bare hands. Um, I'm excited to see this one. That's kind of a cool one. Um, the other tool is uh, a knife. I, I would normally use a soap cutter, a professional soap cutter uh, for soap I'm gonna be selling. But again, this one is gonna be for personal use. Um, I've got a little cutting board we'll be using, paper towel, and rubbing alcohol is a really good tool to use because if you have soap that's kind of sticky, uh, hard enough to cut, but it's sticky, rather than pulling it off the knife, you can slide it off the knife. And if you're finding that it's sticky, if you add a little bit of that rubbing alcohol on, then what you'll find is uh, this will stop it from sticking so much. Okay, let's get into cutting the soap. 